The Doogie DG550 claims to be one of the cheapest octa-core smartphones on the market. Sure, the price is attractive, but how many corners were cut to make this phone a reality? This is my full review of the Doogie DG550. Like I do with every review, I'll start off with the design. It's available in both black or white, and the majority of the device is soft-touch plastic. The plastic on this phone feels great, and it's easily the best part of the design. On the back, you'll find a slight camera hump along with an LED flash. There's also a speaker on the bottom left. The back cover is removable and does expose a 2600 mAh battery, microSD card expansion slot, a SIM slot, and a micro SIM slot. The back is difficult to remove and can be really awkward to put back into place. The clips also don't snap correctly unless you apply a fairly large amount of pressure. Although I do appreciate the removable cover, it's very cheap and flimsy. There's a lot of give when pressing down near the bottom of the cover, and you can even hear some terrible creaking noises. The bottom chin has this problem as well, although it's not as noticeable. Speaking of the chin, if you look at the bottom of the device, you'll see the phone's only microphone on the right grill, but absolutely nothing on the left. It's not another microphone and definitely not another speaker, so I'm questioning why it's even there. There's also two pentalobe screws, which needs to be removed if you need to remove the chin for disassembly. Interestingly, the chin is also held in place by clips, so the screws at the bottom seem a bit unnecessary. At the top, you'll find a micro USB charging port on the left and a headphone jack on the right. On the left side of the phone, we have a volume rocker, and on the right side, we have a power button. Both buttons were easy to press, but the power button is not positioned properly. It seems that the cutout is slightly off and causes the button to look slanted towards the left near the bottom. This is a small detail and may not affect every device, but it's something that drove me crazy when I looked at the phone. Both sides of the device are covered with some sort of metal, possibly aluminum. The specification sheet claims that this device is 6.5mm thick, but it's much thicker at about 8.6mm. I'm not exactly sure how they came up with 6.5mm, but this device is nowhere near the thinnest it claims to be. It is one of the heavier options available at 192 grams. Maybe. I guess we'll never know for sure. As I finish discussing the design, I want to highlight the poor build quality. As I mentioned a few seconds ago, there seems to be some creaky noises, clip quality issues, and general design flaws. It does not stop here though, and I was shocked to discover that the DG550 is so poorly built that it actually bends. When applying a small amount of pressure, and trying not to break my reviewer device, you can clearly see an issue with how the side bends and the cover pops out. This flexibility is present when flexing both in or out, and it is even worse when removing the back cover and the battery. I'm very concerned about how this phone would respond to a drop, or even daily use. This is clearly another cut corner, but is only the beginning of a poor experience. On the front of the DG550, there's three capacitive buttons. The menu and back button both illuminate white, and the home button illuminates blue, and doesn't look like much of a home. During the testing period, the DG550 suffered from poor call quality and cellular reception. Data would sometimes just stop working, and reception varied from 1 to 4 hours within seconds without moving. A lot of calls I placed on the DG550 were dropped, and the quality of those calls was relatively poor as well. It was difficult to hear callers clearly, and callers also said they heard a high amount of background noise. Unfortunately, this device is just plain terrible when using a mobile network. <laughs> The language change has failed. You have not entered a valid choice. Please try again later. The Doogie DG550 features a 5.5 inch 720p display. I was really disappointed when I found multiple LCD bright spots just after unboxing the device. There are two major spots and a few faint areas. These faint spots are difficult to see unless looking at a white background, but the major spots were almost always visible regardless of the background. I think this is unacceptable from a new device and really hope that this is just an issue with my particular unit. The display overall looks pretty bad as well. Viewing angles were just okay, color reproduction was way off, and sunlight readability was nearly impossible. If you look at colors on the display compared to other Chinese smartphones, you can see how color is indeed off. There also isn't any Gorilla Glass, so the display did scratch pretty easily. If you like notification LEDs, I have some bad news. The DG550 doesn't have any. It's something I tend to gloss over with other phone reviews, but the absence here was both noticeable and disappointing. The DG550 has an average sounding speaker. 
It did sound slightly distorted, but not nearly as bad as some other phones I've tested. The 13 megapixel rear camera produced some disappointing shots. The images appeared noisy, washed out, and overexposure was an issue often. Here's some sample video. Doogie claims that the DG550 runs Android 4.2.9 Jelly Bean. However, I suspect version number spoofing as Google never released this version. I think this type of spoofing is very dishonest and misleads consumers. Doogie also changed stock icons and every third party app icon had a circle added around it. They also modified the lock screen, which I found to be difficult to use. Overall, the version number spoofing and customization make the software experience unappealing. Powered by the MediaTek MTK6592 1.7 GHz octa-core processor, the DG550 performed well. There's also 1 GB of RAM, which was enough for basic multitasking. I also played a few games. The DG550 also includes 16GB of internal storage and also a microSD card expansion slot up to 32GB. I did test GPS on the Doogie DG550 and didn't have any issues. The navigation voice wasn't the newer Google Now voice, but an older voice used in Android 4.0 and Android 4.1. There's also dual SIM support, meaning that you can use two phone numbers with different carriers with this single device. Battery life on this phone was slightly below average, but it did last all day with very light usage. The 2600mAh battery can be removed, so if you want to extend the battery life, you can purchase an additional battery for just $4.99 on the Panda World website. I highly recommend you do that. If you purchase the Doogie DG550 from Panda World, you will receive a multi-language quick start guide, earbuds, a futuristic looking USB cable, and an AC adapter. And that brings us to my conclusion. The Doogie DG550 has a lot of shortcomings. Poor build and call quality, display issues, lack of a notification LED, version number spoofing, and an unsatisfying battery life. The only good thing that stands out about this phone is its processor. And yeah, it's great to have that kind of performance, but there are so many other shortcomings. For these reasons, I simply cannot recommend this phone. I do hope to see more devices from Doogie in the future, and hopefully they've learned a few things after this phone. Although the price is attractive, sometimes you really do get what you pay for. Thank you for watching and please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to see more phone unboxings and reviews.